Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome to this, your Two White Muslims session. It's wonderful to be here, it's fantastic to be back, but it means we have to do this. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rakbatullahi. Wa barakatuh. My name's Junaid Rahim. My name's Muhammad Yusuf Bashforth. And together we're affectionately known as... The Two White Muslims. Hey, but you already knew that. <laughs> we're joined today by our beloved brother, uh, colleague and the awesome Korsatai. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good to be here, mashallah. And fantastic to have Good you. To Thank have you very you. much indeed for joining <laughs> us. Um, as we always say, the third member of the two white Muslims team. He's the brains of the operation. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So we find ourselves with an amazing topic today, a really, really, uh, one that's really close to our hearts, is it not? Absolutely, um, yes. Today we're going to talk about dawah, about passing on this amazing gift. So, dawah. Dawa, mm. calling people to the religion of Islam. Yeah, that's the that's the literal meaning of the word dawa mm -hmm. in, in Arabic. Yeah. Let's face it, the, the the greatest gift that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has bestowed upon us as believers is the blessing of Islam. Alhamdulillah, yeah. we're the most fortunate human beings on earth. Mm. There is no other religion or ideology that's going to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except for Islam. Mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, this day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favour upon you and I have approved for you Islam as your way of life. Mm. And this is the Quran, Surah Al-Maidah chapter 5 verse 3. The day of Arafah was the day our religion was completed and perfected for us. In essence, giving us the greatest of all blessings, that's Islam. Islam. And we can pray five times a day, we can do extra prayers, you know, we can, we can, we can bow down to Allah. But let's be honest, we'll never be able to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough for this incredible, incredible gift. Um, however, the religion of Islam is for all mankind, not just for born Muslims, not just for converts, but for everybody. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it obligatory to convey the message of Islam to others. For this, we need to do dawah. A person who does dawah is called a da'i. So let's break it down. What is dawah? Mm -hmm. What does dawah mean? I mean, first of all, subhanAllah, we are so blessed that we are born Muslims, mm. we as born Muslims. And you, mashallah, you reverted to Islam. Mm. So that's a blessing in itself, mm. alhamdulillah. And there are thousands and thousands of people who are embracing Islam. In fact, in the UK, up to 5,000 people embrace Islam every year. And in other parts of Europe, the, greater, the number is even greater. I'm mm. amazed by that. Uh, even just after 9-11, many, many people embrace Islam. Mm -hmm. And yet, if a person <coughs> becomes a Muslim through our efforts, there are huge rewards in that. Mm. And we are required, it's incumbent upon us to do dawah, to invite others to Islam. So what is dawah? The Arabic word dawah literally means to invite or to call to something. Mm. Dawah means to call to something. When it is used in combination with Islam, it means inviting mankind to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willingly and also not to be forced upon but to worship Allah alone and follow his straight path and keep away from disbelief. That is what dawah is, inviting <coughs> others to submit to the Creator. Mm. In a sense, dawah is to invite non-Muslims to Islam and teach them about Islamic beliefs and practices. Mm. This does not mean that we are there to convert people to Islam, to force upon anybody to convert to Islam, mm. but to just to spread the message of Islam in the, in the way that our beloved Prophet and all the prophets and messengers mm. did. Uh, over the period of generations mm. uh, through 124,000 prophets and messengers that were sent yeah. throughout the ages. So it's a noble work and it's a noble task. So that's what dawah means, subhanAllah. Subhanallah. You know, we've, we've, we have had the last of the prophets. Mm -hmm. We have had the seal of the prophet. Yep. That was our beloved prophet Muhammad, so sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah has said there will be no more. There have been 124,000 prophets throughout history, ending with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, if the message of Islam is to go out there and expand and increase, then it's down to us. Mm. It's our duty. It's our our problem. 
as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, certainly we have raised among every nation a messenger <coughs> who declared, serve Allah and shun false objects of worship. Thus were some guided by Allah, while ruin was justified on others. Travel over the earth and see what befell those who rejected their messengers. Mm. And this is a really powerful message in the Noble Quran, chapter 16, verse 36. Mm. Mm. And it's incredible when, when we consider, you know, 124,000 prophets and messengers. Um, this was a, a well, I've got to say, this was a revelation for me. <laughs> Not really. This, I remember you know, an being... An eye-opener. <laughs> it was an eye-opener. <laughs> you could hear the penny dropping yes. when mm. that occurred to me. Aha, I get it. Because, you know, I, I, being born a Christian, when, when, we, when we would consider, you know, uh, messengers, we had the Bible, and within the Bible there were, there were many names mentioned, but only 20, 22, mm. 23. Mm. Um, and I can remember sitting there as a, as, a, as, a, as a young child thinking, well, you know, I was, I was born in Sheffield. If I take, you know, going back in time through, through, through the ages, what chance did people in Sheffield stand if all of these messengers came in the east <coughs> and you know all of a sudden you think oh no 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 there's 124,000 of them they came all over the world and they came for every nation at just the right time with the correct information you yes. think genius yes. this is amazing <laughs> i get it now islam yeah. is fantastic mm -hmm. so there was all these prophets all these messengers bringing this information yep. over time as you rightly say though the final prophet the final messenger being our beloved Prophet uh, 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 Muhammad, uh, may Allah be pleased with him. Um, and where he, you know, where all the other prophets came for speci specific nations at specific times with specific information, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent by Allah as the final prophet and messenger for his people. But also, he came for every single person in humanity from now or from then, right the way through to the day. Of judgment, Alhamdulillah. There's no prophet to come after Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, as a result, if we think, well, first of all, based on the prophet's words, one in five people on this earth now are Muslim. Yeah, twenty percent are Muslim, but it does mean that eighty percent aren't. But he did that without Instagram, Snapchat, no Instagram. without TikTok, exactly. and YouTube. You know, and they're he not all Facebook. They're not all local. <laughs> you know, this is <laughs> all around the world. But it means eighty percent of people still need to get that message. Yes, they do. And still need to understand that message. Yeah. And still need to receive yeah. this information. It's down to us, and into yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it has to be. No prophet to come after the prophet Muhammad, peace be so. upon him. So it's it's down to us, the believers to pass on this message in the form of dawah. Yes. SubhanAllah. So Adam wassalam, was the first prophet of Islam. Mm. A lot of people don't know this. He mm. was the first prophet. 25 prophets and messengers are mentioned in the Quran. Mm. The rest are not mentioned. Um, so Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, Noah, the Christians and the Jews are really impressed by that, that these mm. prophets are mentioned because they are also mentioned in the Old Testament and the New yeah. Testament. Um, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, to call others to Allah by saying, O oh Muhammad, we have sent you as witness and a bearer of glad tidings and a warner, and as one, one who invites to Allah, i.e. Islamic monotheism, by his leaf, and as a lamp spreading light. So this is how our beloved Prophet was addressed by Allah. Mm. This is chapter 33, uh, verse 45 and 46. So this noble work, work and this noble task is now upon us as a Muslim Ummah. We as Muslims should not keep Islam too much to our chest. Mm. It's about time that we need to spread this word, subhanAllah. And I'm really glad that many people are doing that. You know, mm. We're doing it, mashallah, for the past <coughs> you know, so many years. And yeah. I've been doing it for the past 18 years now, mm. and doing uh, Islamic awareness workshops yeah. and Islamic awareness training courses and open days. Mm. And now the Muslim Council of Britain, through the Visit My Mosque Day initiative, yeah, yeah. are helping other people and other masajid to give them the resources and yeah. training to enable them to do this uh, Visit My Mosque Day. Yeah. And the next that's going to be happening is on the 3rd of September 2022 yeah. and 4th of September. So any masajid which wants to do an open day, contact the Muslim Council of Britain, Visit My Mosque Day initiative 
and register your masjid and get some training and get some resources and do this because it's a fantastic opportunity for us to do that. Yeah. Nowhere in the world, by the way, uh, does this kind of initiative like Britain does. Yeah. Oh. Other European countries are following suit and, yeah. and trying to learn from us. Yeah. But those people who, those, those masajid that has been set up already here, they should take this opportunity to do that, yeah. do that as well. And I'm really glad that many, many masajid is now um, getting on board and many masajid are now doing it every year mm. and it's increasing so that's really positive yeah yeah and so important look i mean let's let's face it the work that we do mm. in giving dawah we don't go through many hardships do we <laughs> not really I mean, come on it's not that hard is it there was it's a cup of easy. coffee waiting for me today it, it's made easy because <laughs> we've got computers we've got videos we've got the yes. internet we've got this that and the other yeah you know, the thing is that when we think back to the days of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, wow. peace be upon him, he mm. worked in the most difficult circumstances. Yeah. Yet he demonstrated excellence in moral character mm. during his dawah effort. Yeah. He did everything possible <coughs> to convey Allah's message despite the most difficult response from mm. the people around him, the people of Mecca. He remained firm, patient, steadfast and confident of Allah's help and ultimate victory. Mm. He associated his will with the will of Allah. I mean, think about that. Mm. His will with the will of Allah and showed how to follow Allah's method in doing the work of dawah. Mm. We just need to look at what he did and try and emulate him in the way that he did it, yes. inshallah. Yeah. Sure. And if we consider why, you know, why do dawah to non-Muslims, uh, I suppose, first of all, number one, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. Yeah, the first thing we need to think about is, is you know, if we're going to give dawah, we need to have a very pure intention. You know, the purest of reasons for doing so. We should do dawah solely to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to fulfil his commandment. We shouldn't do it for the name, we shouldn't do it for the fame, we shouldn't do it for the glory. For every action, we must have good intentions. Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, narrates. I heard the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, say, actions are judged by motives, near. So each man will have what he intended. Thus, he whose migration, Hijra, was to Allah and his messenger, um, his migration to, to, is to Allah and his messenger. But he whose migration was for some worldly thing that he might gain, for a wife that he might marry, his migration is to that for which he migrated. Mm. Mm. This is uh, recorded in Bukhari and Muslim. So the reason that we choose to do this is what we'll ultimately get out of it. Mm. And if the reason that we do this is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then our pure intention is to help Allah. Mm. Alhamdulillah. Also, if you do have that good intention and that pure intention, there are many, many rewards to be gained on this. Dawah is among the, um, the most high-ranking Islamic good deeds. Mm. Um, and people don't know and don't, don't really appreciate this. Mm. There are so many rewards in this because it is the custom of the prophets of Allah. Mm. So it's a noble cause uh, and the continuation of their mission and the core of their message. Our beloved Prophet وسلم, was re has reported to be have said, to cause another person's guidance to Islam through your efforts is better than having a great amount of wealth. Mm. So just imagine equating your great amount of wealth and doing dawah and somebody coming into the fold of Islam, then so many rewards uh, mm. are there, better than the whole world that you might possess. Yeah. And that's recorded in Bukhari and Muslim. In another hadith, our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, said, anyone who guides others to doing a good deed will receive a reward equal to that of the person who practiced it. And that's recorded in Muslim as well. Mm. So anybody who does good deeds. So just imagine if a person embraces Islam and every good that they do, yep. every, par, every salah that they, they pray, the, the reward will be on the person who made that person become yeah. Muslim. Just imagine. SubhanAllah. So without so impacting rewards. the person doing it. Exactly. Without <laughs> right. impacting the person doing it. Yeah. Exactly. They don't lose anything. That's right. Allah is so merciful. Allah is yeah. so, SubhanAllah, uh, you know, you know, so blessed. Another, you know, that one of the main reasons why we should give dawah, why we should do this, why mm. we should deliver this message, is because we are responsible. We, we yes. <laughs> yeah. And that, you know, doing dawah is the individual mm. responsibility of every Muslim, man or woman. Yeah. 
Allah commanded the believers to do whatever they can in order to spread the message of Allah. He made the Muslim Ummah, both individuals and in groups, responsible for the whole of this noble cause. <laughs> <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you true believers in Islamic monotheism and followers of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his sunnah, are the best of peoples ever raised up for mankind. You enjoin al-Maruf, the good, and forbid al-Munkar, evil, and you believe in Allah. This is the Quran, chapter 3, verse 110. In another verse, similar to this one, Allah says, Let there arise out of you a group of people inviting to all that is good and enjoying maruf, whatever is good, and forbidding al-munkar, whatever is evil, and it is they who are successful ones. Mm. So, subhanAllah, last chapter 3, verse 104. You know, the Surah Al-Asr is also, Allah says in the Quran, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمْلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْسَّبِلِ By the token of time, by the token of time, man is in complete loss. Mm -hmm. Except for those who do good, who are on the true path, mm -hmm. and who invite others to the true path, inviting others to the righteousness. Mm -hmm. That is what Dawa is, inviting others as well, and who are patient and who persevere, mm -hmm. subhanAllah. So it's incumbent upon us to do Dawa as much as we can. Either in your workplace, either organizing open days, either workshops, or through just your mannerisms and etiquettes. Mm. Yes. And hopefully we'll, we'll go through this, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Inshallah. You know, we all want to get closer to Allah, don't we? Yep, we, we all do. You know, and the best way to, to learn something is to teach it, yep. isn't it? Because before you can teach something, you have to know your stuff. Mm. So if you want to get closer to Allah, start telling people about Allah, yes. because you will have to learn. Uh, learn your trade, you have to learn uh, about your, your faith and about your deen and about, mm. uh, about this beautiful Islam. Mm. So the purpose of Dawah <coughs> should not only be to spread the knowledge of Islam, but for us to grow closer to Allah ourselves. Mm -hmm. The act, uh, take the act of, of inviting others to Islam as a way of bringing ourselves closer to Islam as well. Yeah, and as you say, the, the best way to learn anything is to teach it. Yes. Is to talk about it. First of all, as you rightly say, you need to learn it in order to propagate it. You need to learn it in order to talk about it. But you'll always receive questions. And every time you get a question that you don't know the answer to, when you go away and study and find that answer, your knowledge has just increased and you're ready for the question mm. next time. So actually the first person to benefit from the knowledge passed on to others is actually ourselves. Yes. Through continuously passing on the message of Islam and reminding others of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, we indeed will strengthen our own belief as well as our relationship with Allah and his chosen way of life. And consequently, Dawah helps us to connect to Allah more and to prevent us from becoming neglectful of him and his message. Also, we need to remember that everyone is a potential Muslim. <laughs> Every human being is a potential Muslim, no matter even if they are enemies of Islam. Yeah. Um, you know, every, <coughs> every person is a potential Muslim. Remember Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. He was about to assassinate our beloved Prophet <coughs> Look how he was diverted by Allah and he became a Muslim. Mm. And he was the second Khalifa, just wow. imagine. So no matter how much a person hates Islam or Muslims. Mm. If Allah is wanting to guide that person, mm. Allah will guide him. And he certainly will be, or he or she will certainly be guided. We just need to make the effort and to have that patience. That's all that's required by Allah for, for, from, from us. So even if somebody, I mean, there are many, many occasions that we know people who hated Islam, you know, who were in politics, the person who actually uh, banned the minarets in Switzerland, he embraced Islam. Mm -hmm. um, and we know the person, you know, two, two guys who are from Netherlands, mm -hmm. uh, who, are, who are part of the political uh, uh, party that was against Islam and wanted to ban the Quran and ban the mosques. Mm -hmm. um, they the wanted Muslims. to ban Muslims. Muslims yes. as well, yes, exactly. Get them out of the country. Yeah. And, and those, these two people in this Islam. It's an amazing who we've story. Met, of course, uh, yes. as well, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. such an amazing story. You know, uh, 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 and, and it makes perfect sense. You know, it, it's, the, it's the majesty and, and wisdom of Allah. But you know, one of them, wanted to ban what Islam. What a lovely man! An amazing guy. <laughs> and he said, "Well, if, if I if I'm gonna if I'm gonna 
prove these Muslims wrong. If I'm going to, you know, get everybody behind me against Muslims, I need to know about Islam. I'm going to learn about Islam. So he went away and studied Islam, learnt about Islam, and eventually loved Islam. <laughs> and eventually he <laughs> said, amazing. Allah, this is Allah, <laughs> he became Muslim. <laughs> so you know, but it just shows <clears throat> knowledge, the acquisition of knowledge, allowing people to understand the truth, hopefully will help them on their journey towards Allah. You know. The least one can do is to pray for them. Yeah. If you can't do dawah, through your mannerisms and etiquettes and words mm. and, and things like that, then at least pray for them. Yeah. Because who knows, you know, th when they embrace Islam, they, they might even overtake you in, your, in, in the good deeds that they mm. do. SubhanAllah. Like you, you said earlier, Kosa, let the r uh, rise up from among you a group of people inviting mm, yes, to all that is good. Yeah. I didn't expect it to be us three. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, and, and when you were saying, Kosa, that yeah. everybody is a potential Muslim, Exhibit A. a. <laughs> exhibit, exhibit B. B. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody that came to me, or somebody that spoke to me 30 years ago <clears> and said, oh, by the way, you know, 10 years from now, you'll be Muslim, you will. You know, you'll not be drinking anymore. You'll be praying five times a day. You know, you, you, you'll get married to, to another Muslim. Your children will be Muslim. And I've looked and said, that's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yes. I have not a chance. But, you know. It just goes. To, it, it, I I lived my first twenty eight years yeah. without knowing anything about Islam. Yep, likewise. But do you know I lived in an area <coughs> where every Sunday morning, mm. ding dong, the beer, the, you know, the, somebody at the door, yep. with a copy of the Watchtower yes. and a copy of the the mm. Gideon Bible or yep. you know what, and these are really well put together, Absolutely. articulate, intelligent people yeah. that were talking about God. Yes. You know, and mm -hmm. they did it in such an amazing and convincing way. Yeah. They are brilliant at what they do. Yeah. But do you know, in that 28 year period, never once did a Muslim walk down my mm. drive and ring my bell. Yeah. And you know, had that happened, Years earlier, mm. I think I would have been ready to embrace Islam yeah. years oh. earlier. Yeah. And let that be a message to all <coughs> da'is out there. Yeah. yeah, Don't stop. Don't just knock on the same old doors. Don't yeah. just talk to the same old people. Move on. Mm. Move outside of your comfort zone and start talking to people who you wouldn't ordinarily talk yeah. to. Yeah. Because yeah. within those people, you will find diamonds. You yes. really will. Yeah. You know, to, to, we, need to, we need to try and enlighten people about mm. Islam. This is, our, this is our duty and it's our goal. Yeah. Dawah is not done to convert people to Islam. <coughs> it's done to simply enlighten them, teach mm. them, show them the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Ultimately, giving them the choice to either accept the right path or yeah. not. Yeah. 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, your duty is only to convey the message. <laughs> and on us is the reckoning. This is the Quran, chapter 13, verse 40. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there is no compulsion in religion. Verily, guidance has become distinct from falsehood. Whoever disbelieves in the false deities and believes in Allah, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that will never break and Allah is all hearer and all knower. Mm. Quran, Surah <coughs> al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 256. Subhanallah. Amazing. We're not here to convert people, we're here to pass on information. You know, we're going to have a quick break, but after the break I want to talk about that because that in, in my humble opinion alleviates a massive burden. Absolutely. If you're not going out to convert people, yep. if you're not going out to convince people, if all you're doing is sharing information, wow, just got a bit easier, didn't it? It did. It just got a bit easier. So we'll take a quick break and we'll have that discussion when we come back, inshallah. <laughs> 